Okay, so let's review um, the lab analysis um, that we want to do. Let's hide this, grab a pen, about yellow. Um, we're going to look at the crash lab analysis and kind of how we need to look at that data. So um, we had velocity time data. Velocity, there's time, and it came in with a certain velocity or was accelerating up to that velocity and then <sighs> crashed and then bottomed out. So looking at this, zoom in. What we have here is it came in with one velocity. So this is before the crash, right? This is the beginning of it anyway. At that crash, it had some velocity. We'll call it V1 at time one. So the velocity and time before the crash. And then when it flattened out here, the velocity changed, bounced backwards. You end up with, this is after the crash, right? You end up with the second velocity probably negative, or these might be flipped. It might have been going negative to positive. Depends where you had your, had your sensor. It'll work either way. And a second time over here. And all of this is the crash happening, right? Because it takes time. It lasts for a certain duration. So we eventually want to get to finding the force applied on the cart while this whole thing was going on. So let's tuck that away here in the corner. So that's the data we're working with. So if we want to find the momentum uh, before the crash, then we're looking at mass of the cart, which we should have taken, um, and times V1. If we want to look at the momentum after, same deal. Mass of the cart times V2. So now we have a difference in momentum. One of these is, should be negative, right? Because it bounced back the other direction, the opposite direction. So if we want to find the change in momentum, well, we just to look at the momentum after and subtract the momentum before, right? And if we always do final minus initial or afterwards minus before, um, any positive or negatives will take care of itself. So um, be careful of those. You should get a difference. You know, this is going across our, our zero line there for velocity. So the delta P, the change in momentum that you get, should be larger than any of these two individual ones uh, because one of those is going to be negative. Okay, so that's our change in momentum. Um, from their impulse momentum theorem, our change in momentum is equal to our impulse. All right, the impulse is not the change in momentum. It doesn't mean the same thing. An impulse is the force times time that occurred uh, to change the momentum, but an impulse causes the change in momentum and it's equal to it. So by definition, the impulse is force times time, but that causes a change in momentum. Um, so they are equal in value. Okay, so let's look at that. So now that we know our change in momentum from final momentum minus initial momentum, we can set up this equation, force times time is equal to that change in momentum that we just calculated. Or we could set it up as the single mass, same mass, times the change in velocity, right? To get the t, really we're talking about delta t, the change in time. It's not one specific time, but the how long did the crash take? So that should be t2 minus t1. All right, and it's going to be a short amount of time, hopefully longer for the crash barriers. That was our intent. Um, whatever data you came with, we'll analyze it. If it didn't work as great as you thought, so be it. That's fine. More importantly, I want you to know how to work with these calculations and, and do what we're doing here. So M delta V. So now we divide by that delta T. Divide by delta T. And we get, scoop this up, that force equal to the mass times the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And that's going to give us whatever that force is on average. And we say average force because we don't know how that force changed per time. If we, if we were able to measure it and graph it, you know, it might be a little different. If we looked at force in time, it probably like increased and then spiked and then probably decreased. So really what we're able to calculate is probably an average there. And that's fine for our needs, for what we're needing to do. Average force in that, in that instance is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, that's the idea.